My name's John Marr. I was born and brought up in Manchester. Here's a couple of photos of me with mum and dad when I was about three years old. Uh, when I was uh, 16, just after, around my 16th birthday, got a second-hand drum kit. I ended up joining a punk rock band called Buzzcocks. After the band split in 1981, um, I drifted into another one of my interests, which was uh, building and racing high-performance air cool Volkswagens. I used to race the uh, the red car and the green car that you can see in the pictures here. And um, in 2002, I moved the business up to the Isle of Harris. And uh, about 2009, I got uh, very seriously into photography making use of the lack of light pollution up here to produce some of the images which I'm about to show you. And this first selection of photographs were all taken under the light of a full moon and the exposure times lasting several minutes. This particular one's a little fishing boat that was just stuck on the uh, jetty just down the road from our house. This is uh, an old 1957 Albion truck that used to belong to a tweed mill in Stornoway that had been abandoned at the side of the road. And this used to be known locally as the magic phone box because when you put your 10p in the slot, the phone call, you'd never be cut off. It'd just go on for as long as you wanted. This is the road home, I called it that because I was literally on the way home after a long night out shooting under the full moon and got the idea to just walk along the road shining my torch uh, on the road surface all the way down to that bend in the distance. The next three photos were all taken in Ness which is at the top end of the Isle of Lewis and here's uh, the little cute Ness post office. Uh, this was taken in uh, January 2011, uh, shortly after midnight. One of the many shearlings out on the moor in Ness. There's a variety of uh, constructions, but they're all based on a, a familiar theme. There's some one open space with a stone gable end, so that there's a, a fire in there to keep the place warm. Um, many of them are in uh, various states of uh, disrepair, but also some are still used to this day. And here's Ness's most famous landmark, that's the Butt of Lewis Lighthouse, uh, famously made of brick and uh, one of the few lighthouses that isn't painted. And here are three night photos where I've not actually added any additional light, I'll just let nature take its course with these. And the first is uh, what's known as Northton Temple on the Isle of Harris. And uh, this is just a long exposure. The orange glow over to the right is the street lights in the village of Northton. Here's an unexpected visitor. A decommissioned oil rig washed up on the uh, west side of Lewis in August 2016. So uh, this was a late night trek across the cliff top path to get access to the rig was the police had closed the roads. Don't get many opportunities to take a picture like this on the islands. This is rush hour in Stornoway and we're looking at the Anlanta Gallery which is the place where my first main exhibition took place. So more about that in the next section. When I was doing my night photography, occasionally I'd go inside some of the old abandoned houses that I was photographing, usually to light the interior. And this is when I started noticing that some of them had quite a lot of personal possessions and furniture and so on left behind. So I started going back in daylight hours to photograph this and next series of images is from nobody's home. This photograph gave me the title for the exhibition. Um, I took this back in 2010, it's on the Isle of Lewis. And um, the thing that drew me to it when I first saw it straight away was uh, it just reminded me of the houses that I used to draw when I was at uh, primary school with the red door bang in the middle, um, windows either side, just the symmetry of it and the simplicity. 
I often saw some very brightly coloured interiors like uh, this yellow painted V lining in the house on the Bays of Harris along with a, a clock that I subsequently learned was quite a popular model from uh, the local hardware shop in Tarbert in the 1970s. This is the mystery of the house with the TV set. Um, long after I'd taken this photograph I met a member of the family who informed me that um, the house never actually had any electricity so why this vintage TV set was in there I have no idea. Here I'm looking into one of the upstairs bedrooms of Ense House which is the only house on the little island of uh, Ense in the Sound of Harris and um, it was quite, quite a grand house in its day. You can see the bell on the wall there to summon the servants from quarters down below. Um, it's not actually been occupied full time for a long, long time now. I stumbled across this by accident one night. Um, it was during the Muir burn season um, where they set fire to the um, heather to encourage new growth and so on. And occasionally it gets a little bit out of hand and it was just the you know the reflection in the lock there just made for a photo opportunity that I, I couldn't resist. The next five images uh, were all shot using a large format film camera from the 1960s and I, I wanted to get that large 4 inch by 5 inch negative to produce incredibly detailed large size prints for the exhibition. And this is the house that um, I showed you earlier, the one with the TV set inside. And there's a very common sight in a lot of uh, Hebridean homes. It's the classic Rayburn, which was the really the focal point of the home, I suppose, because it provided heat, uh, you cooked your food there, and it also provided you with hot water. See these everywhere. This room has just got so much in it, that amazing blue chair, the uh, ornate mirror above the mantelpiece and then all various ornaments and there was even uh, a birthday card on the mantelpiece as well. went back to visit this house in North Uist about 18 months after I'd taken the photograph you see here uh, with the TV crew from the BBC but as we approached the house it was obvious the roof had completely collapsed in but uh, went up tried to get in and uh, could barely push the door open everything completely buried underneath timbers and slates and so on so this possibly uh, could be the last photograph that was ever taken of that room and uh, yeah, spot the sheep carcass in the corner. I like the blue flaking paint on the door and the fact that the wood effect wallpaper is also peeling away to reveal the real wood hiding behind it. And to round things off, here's a look at some more recent work of mine. Uh, this is um, a series of portraits, part of an ongoing project where I'm featuring people who live and work on the island. And uh, in a funny sort of way, this was, this. I see this as a bit of a carry-on from the abandoned houses really, because although those pictures don't, don't feature any actual people, I felt that the, um, the it is, it's very much about the people who used to live there. And then taking that forward, let's feature some of the people who do live and work here today just paying tribute really to the people who were uh, maybe doing might be an ordinary job some people might refer to them as that um, but in an extraordinary place and the images are hopefully are trying to convey that 